The beginnings of the port of Turku during the Middle Ages were an important part of the birth of the city itself. German trade, organized by the Hansa League, settled at the end of the 1200s into the Unikankere district, where the central diocese was also transferred and later gave rise to the Cathedral of Turku. The inland harbor was made up of storage buildings owned by the middle-class merchants. The cog ships of the Hansa League were moored at their docks. Barrels of Baltic herring and bundles of dried fish were some of Finland's most important export items during the medieval period, right up to the 1500s. Salt, wines, and other luxury goods were brought to Turku. This way, Turku developed naturally into Finland's capital city. The 17th century was the time of the Great Wars. Holland rose with the decline of the Hansa League into a strong naval power also on the Baltic Sea. Europe's growing navies required incredible amounts of tar, and Finland rose to become its most important producer at the midpoint of the century. The large ships could no longer access the river, which had become shallower, so loading was moved to the outer harbour at Linnanauko, near the castle. The shortage of merchant ships, eventual lack of demand for tar export, limitations on luxury goods, and the monopolies of the crown were setbacks on Turku's navigation activities at the end of the 17th century. And Turku commerce was hit even stronger by the Great Northern War at the outset of the 18th century. Turku's first ship of its own that was suitable for international traffic was the St. Johannes, completed in 1726. With its rise as the leading commercial port of Finland, Turku already had 12 deep-sea sailing ships, which for the most part sailed to the Mediterranean for the winter. The Crown also consolidated its positions, and due to the war experiences of Sweden's King Gustav, close to 40 gunboat shelters and depots were built near the castle. In 1808, with Russia having attacked Finland, these vessels could not be used because they were frozen in the ice. The entire naval base was devastated by fire as the Russian forces marched into the town. The next year, Turku became the first capital city of autonomic Finland under annexation to Russia. In Europe, the war continued, and it was not until 1813 that traffic beyond the Baltic Sea was reinitiated. A harbour master's office was established in Turku, as well as his official appointment. In 1821, the first steamship, a paddle-wheel schooner called Stockholm began plying the waters between Turku and Sweden's capital, and during the next decade, regular steamship traffic began to Stockholm, Helsinki, and St. Petersburg. Even the dredging of the river and its mouth was switched to machine power when the first steam dredger initiated operations in 1841. A new stage in the history of the port of Turku began in 1875. A railway was coming to the harbour, and the town council decided that a pier would be built on the crest of the canal resulting from dredging, so vessels requiring deep water could moor there. As a result, the proportion of steamships engaged in the exchange of goods grew in Turku by two-thirds. Another decisive turning point was the regularly scheduled weekly ship traffic launched in 1898 by a new Turku company at the time, Bore. To ensure the safety of traffic, Turku acquired its first icebreaker, the Avance. The sheltering archipelago route proved to be surer than the state's favorite, Hong Kong, which was beset by hard ice packs during the winter. The outcome was that the Finnish steamship company, Suomen Hörulaiva, also switched the main thrust of its traffic to Turku. As of 1912, these firms already maintained daily traffic to Stockholm with government support. The dynamic growth of international traffic was severed by the outbreak of World War I. The archipelago station of Turku and Oland, where Turku's naval base functioned as a center for staff and maintenance, was an important defense site for the Russian Navy. On the 6th of December 1917, while the war continued raging, Finland declared its independence. In 1920, Turku established a special port administration, the first of its kind in Finland, which was given responsibility for the development of the entire harbour. In the wake of the Stockholm line, similar ones were born, sailing to Lubeck, Stettin, Hull, and even South America. 
ship size growth, loading conditions with a strong competitive edge, and winter transport all placed greater demands on the port. Indeed, the city had plans made which later became the basis for the port's future development. The waterways to Kanabaniemi were deepened, the piers were expanded, and the peninsula received a sorting yard, as well as plenty of cranes, storage areas, and protective sheds for goods. In 1930, the building of the oil port at Ponsio was initiated. It quickly became an important import and distribution harbour. With the Council of State having agreed to the proposal that the Butyric testing station would be moved to Kanavaniemi, a stock house and laboratory for butter were constructed there. The export of butter, which increased rapidly, began comprising other types of food production. With the start of World War II, anti-aircraft defense was immediately transferred to protect the port prior to the outbreak of the Winter War. In January 1940, the port was caused heavy damage by bombing, when Soviet forces targeted their attack on the harbour, which had become a lifeline for Finland to the west. Turku's important position compelled the commanding officers to further consolidate its defence, and two armoured coastal vessels named Ilmarinen and Vainamarinen which had effective anti-aircraft weaponry, dropped anchor at Turku's outer harbour. After the interim peace lasting 15 months, Finland was once again driven into military conflict. Bombing critically destroyed the area around the port, and Finland finally pulled out of the war against the Soviet Union in September 1944. It's difficult to imagine any ship more eagerly waited for than the first post-war vessel carrying coffee. Its route was followed closely on the map, and the press glowingly reported on its arrival in Turku. The war and post-war reconstruction delayed the already initiated completion of the pier at Linnanalko until 1955. The building of the West Pier opposite began two years later. Turku's passenger traffic saw a whole new era, when passport inspection between the Nordic countries was no longer generally required at the close of the 50s, and the combined ship company, Celia, launched its first new type of ferry into service in 1961. The number of port personnel also reached its greatest size. The port administration and building projects provided work for over 400 Turku residents. During the 60s, Passenger traffic no less than quadrupled. Simultaneous improvement in the protection of the port resulted in a vigorous increase in motor vehicle import as well. The free store area introduced by the Turun Vapa Varasto company in 1965, together with the dynamic expansion in lorry traffic at the outset of the 70s, led to the establishment of the port's own terminals. Passenger traffic soon exceeded the already million per year limit. In 1973, Viking Line also started regular passenger traffic from Turku to Kapelscher. In stevedoring, new technology led to total machine operations during the 1980s, speeding up stowage and discharge immensely. Goods were conveyed to and from the vessel on wheels and large units by crane. At the end of the decade, train ferry transport was also initiated from Linnanauko to Stockholm. The possibilities of Linden Alco and the West Harbour were now completely utilized and room for expansion had to be looked for elsewhere. This was found from Ponzio, where an area of almost 100 hectares was made available as the 90s began. The Finn Carriers Company offered to make Ponzio the terminal harbour of its train ferry traffic to Travamund, and the train ferry port received its first vessel already during the spring of 1998. Turku has continuously raised its share as a single consignment and large unit port within the traffic carried on by Finnish ports. In three decades, the passenger traffic has grown four times. After Helsinki, Turku is currently Finland's most important single consignment and large unit port. The logistics centre is capable of coordinating high-value goods as well as their information and monetary flows quickly and economically. Turku's sheltered, modern port is favourable prerequisites indeed to develop into a wide-scale distribution centre, whose area would comprise all of Scandinavia, Northern Europe, the Baltic and Russia. <laughs> <laughs>